Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Soz and a happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers across Australia. This video is for you. In today's weather forecast, we're going to be talking about some very heavy rainfall that lashed Sydney and its southern suburbs over the course of the past 24 hours and what is in the forecast for the future there. We're also going to talk about some rainfall possible for West Australia extending down the coastline there towards Perth and some rainfall in far north Queensland, plus another big development in the Western Pacific Typhoon in the Philippine Sea. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast update so watch it to the end like and subscribe if you haven't already and tell me how you can improve in the comment section down below we're starting things off taking a look at sydney and surrounds right now about 200 millimeters has fallen in total in areas around Naruma and batemans bay the majority of it was early this morning very early this morning around one or two o'clock uh, where we were seeing rainfall accumulations in the hour approach 30 to 50 millimeters for some locations very heavy torrential rainfall occurred down there and the roads are going to be more than hazardous this morning. So exercise caution if you're driving to Mother's Day celebrations around southern New South Wales. Even in the Sydney metro as well, there could be some puddles around, some isolated flooding in some areas. So once again, exercise caution when using the roads because they will be dangerous this morning. But the worst, the rainfall is more than likely over at this time. There will still be a little bit of rainfall for locations between Wollongong and Naruma throughout the course of today. Maybe about 50 millimetres on top of what has already fallen for the absolute wettest of locations. Most likely to fall around around Captain's Flat or Batemans Bay between Canberra and Naruma. Um, but yeah, the bulk of the rainfall is more than likely gone at this point and it will just be showers from here on. In fact, the showers look like they're pulling out of the Sydney Newcastle area from now, which is great news indeed. But man, what a night it was for rainfall, that's for sure. It really piped up at around uh, one or two o'clock in the morning local time and it kept going to about 6 a.m. local time. We were just seeing these very heavy rainfall accumulations move through from a second band and yeah it certainly did provide uh, plenty upon plenty of rainfall for this part of New South Wales very very heavy indeed there's already some minor flooding happening in this area with river levels expected to rise throughout the course of today the they should peak around 6 to 8 p.m. tonight so uh, if they get up towards minor or moderate flooding alerts this uh, evening and to later tonight it certainly will be no surprise and they should start to ease off later tonight and into early tomorrow morning but nonetheless if you're driving through a flood prone area to work on Monday there is a good chance of road closures or some damage to roads especially in the more mountainous areas there is a hot chance of some landslides up there very heavy rainfall though I just I can't uh, reiterate that point enough very very heavy rainfall indeed um, that'd be full though there was actually a rainfall observation last night of 738 millimeters somewhere in the Blue Mountains uh, it certainly wasn't that heavy just outside of Kapramara the town site there the heaviest rainfall in the Blue Mountains or the around the Kosciuszko Mountains uh, area it was probably at around 40 or 50 millimetres overnight. With a light dusting of snow, I would say there was a chance of some snow there. Uh, because of the cold temperatures on the absolute highest of elevations, there could have been a little bit of snow last night. So let me know if that was the case. I haven't checked the snow reports yet. Uh, there was also some good wind gusts as well. We're looking at wind gusts of around 50 to 60 kilometres an hour around Batemans Bay and Naruma. They've since shifted out of the southeast, uh, southwest rather, so wind's certainly not going to be a threat anymore. Um, and it looks like this weather system is more than likely easing up, which is great news indeed, because uh, they don't need any more rainfall down there to put it lightly. We'll take a look at fuel moisture values on the fire intensity uh, map right now, but yeah, take a look at this fuel moisture values. When you start talking about values above uh, 30%, you're really talking about at completely saturated grounds, and here 33 to 34% in some areas, that really is uh, very, very saturated indeed, and it, they've got more than enough moisture uh, down here in this part of New South Wales, which will take a very long time to dry out as well by the looks of things. I might be looking at the wrong map here, but uh, if we're to, oh, soil moisture, that's what I want to be looking at, but soil moisture values of around 100 or at 100%, fuel moisture at around 30%. This is very, very nasty stuff to have, um, especially if you were to look at 300 millimetres on the forecast next week. Thankfully, it looks like the rainfall is over for the foreseeable future, which is fantastic news because, like I have been saying, they do not need another dry drop down here, especially between Malakuta up towards Wollongong. They do not need another drop of rainfall. And it would actually be quite beneficial if the rainfall was to move a little bit further inland, just outside of the Blue Mountains around Wagga Wagga or Young. Uh, they'd be where some rainfall. It would be more than welcome. But I mean, New South Wales, they are well and truly out of drought uh, conditions at this point. It's looking very promising uh, for the agricultural season this uh, year. Uh, with the exception of areas around Wagga Wagga, it'd be great if they could get some moisture uh, into their soils because 
because they're looking pretty dry, but uh, for the rest of New South Wales, it is looking pretty good for farming season 2024, and that is some very good news that farmers wanted to receive, uh, that's for sure. In fact, it is the wettest place around Australia at this time. But yeah, that is a big talk on what has already happened. In terms of rainfall that's going to further occur over the course of today, like I said, 50 to 60 millimetres, maybe 70 in the wettest of locations. But you can see from this map, the worst of the rainfall will be offshore, and it's not expected to swing itself onshore. And if we were to take this forecast out to the full 10 days, there really isn't any rainfall uh, or any significant amounts of rainfall, maybe a further 15 millimetres in the next 10 days after this rainfall event across the coastal parts of New South Wales, which is just fantastic fantastic news. It's going to give them some time to dry out a little bit, but those soil moisture values will continue to remain sky high, and it now might be the perfect time to start planting uh, for 2024. Uh, but yeah, looking relatively dry uh, across a lot of New South Wales, and even into southern Queensland as well, there might be a spot or two of showers in the next five to ten days, uh, probably around next Thursday, Friday or so, uh, maybe even into early next weekend, but again, nothing crazy expected up there. Uh, and the rainfall leads us into the next part of the video which is for far north Queensland. Now I don't normally talk or well, didn't expect to talk about far north Queensland this late on into the uh, wet season. Well now we're definitely heading into the dry season but there is just going to be consistent rainfall totals especially towards the start of next next week or next fortnight where we do see enhanced moisture in the coral sea starting to develop here with the western Pacific typhoon which I'll get to later on in the video. Everything is connected at the end of the day. We could be seeing some rainfall accumulations quite high up here in far north Queensland approaching 200 mil millimetres in one or two spots. Uh, again, nothing absurd, especially for this time of the year. You can expect 200 millimetres over the course of 10 days, uh, but it is still just an interesting piece to be looking at here where we're talking about another 130, 140 millimetres in a week-long period. But yeah, uh, just make sure you are staying vigilant up in far north Queensland. If there's, if there's some heavy showers coming in off the coast, uh, I'll certainly be giving you uh, days warning in advance of some heavy rainfall that's going to be happening up there. But just considering how saturated the catchment are up here. Any significant rainfall or significant amount of rainfall where we're talking 50 to 80 millimetres falling in a 24 hour period will cause some flooding. Uh, but yeah, up here, always make sure you're taking caution on the roads and taking caution around rivers and streams because being tropical, uh, rivers can flow out of control on very short notice, that's for sure. Um, take a look at the Access G3. It's got this interesting piece up here also in the Solomon Sea towards the end of the 10 day forecast period. We're talking about a tropical cyclone developing here. I don't think that that going to happen. That's an absurd thing to have this late in the year on the forecast, so we can discount this pretty much completely. But I have said this before, the axis can be very good at um, predicting tropical cyclones 10 days or 8 to 10 days out in advance. So we will, I will still keep a silent... Well, they want to wish everyone Happy Mother's Day. Uh, hope that doesn't make it into the final cut. But yeah, the Axis G3 very rarely uh, predicts tropical cyclones um, um, inaccurately around 10 days out. It certainly hasn't this cyclone season. So this is something that I'm going to silently keep, keep an eye on. And if it does remain a feature on the forecast, then for sure I'll be giving you the latest on this channel. Um, in terms of other interesting weather happening, I did mention Western Australia as a threat of happening, uh, of happening, having heavy rainfall in the next five to or three to five days by the looks of things. It actually looks like it could be a little bit sooner than that at this point. Uh, over the next 24 to 72 hours, so what's that Monday onwards, it uh, looks like there will be a little low pressure system that approaches the coastline and dumps a little bit of heavy rainfall across a lot of the coastal parts of Western Australia. I think that this forecast is calling for rainfall that's going to be far too heavy, especially for this time of the year. If I was to make this forecast, I would be calling for drizzle with the odd moderate shower which could house a thunderstorm to cross the coast sometime after mon Monday lunchtime and persist through Monday evening and into Tuesday. In short, for locations north of Dune Bay, especially between Geraldton and Carnarvon, and maybe up towards Exmouth, there is the good chance of some drizzly conditions Monday evening into Tuesday morning and the odd thunder shower here and there. There. The Eastern Blue model not really calling for much rainfall, 20 millimetres in the worst and widespread 5 to 10 millimetres of rainfall. The Axis has really gotten ham on this situation here, calling for up to 50 or 80 millimetres in some areas around Murchison. That's probably a little bit extreme at this time. The GFS, probably the most reliable model of them all, uh, calling for the absolute worst of around 15 millimetres just outside of Murchison. Uh, in short, 
This isn't going to be a rainfall or flooding emergency. We're looking at 70 or 80 millimetres falling in a desert part that only receives 100 millimetres in a calendar year. But there is still the chance of a little bit of rainfall up here, which would be, again, fantastic news. 15 millimetres in light fashion uh, will uh, help things go a little bit greener ahead of winter. Certainly will help um, uh, potential crop growth up in this part of Australia. Not sure what you'd be growing up here, but in the northern parts of the wheat, but if the rainfall made it that far south, it will certainly help uh, get the ground just that little bit wetter for farming season 2024. But in terms of other interesting weather, there really isn't much to talk about across Western Australia. You can see that um, actual system starting to come ashore now or move ashore. It's actually a very strong front with some uh, good thunder showers, but it is moving in a southerly trajectory. So this won't even uh, be a problem for Western Australia at all, even though it is just offshore at this time, only a couple of hundred kilometers offshore. You might be able to see this on radar later tomorrow, um, but I don't really think so and it is a slow moving front um, at this time uh, and it will separate and another low pressure system will move up the coastline and impact um, up at Geraldton, Calberry sort of area. Uh, really getting my lo words lost at this time. But yeah, it looks like it's developed quite nicely and it's going to be moving up further north. But that uh, strong thunderstorm band that's really developing right now in the satellite imagery, that's going to be moving it due south at this point. It's not even going to be a worry to Western Australia at this time, even though it's quite close in proximity. We're going to keep it on satellite imagery and we're going to move up into the Western Pacific and talk about the big cluster of thunderstorms that start to pipe itself up over uh, the Philippine Sea at this time, south of Guam. Now, we have been talking about this for the last couple of days, and the models have been shopping and changing like crazy. The Eastern Mobile Earth has never really been behind this storm at all. The GFS really got behind it about two weeks ago, then it got behind it about a week ago, and it's since dropped it as well. So the GFS and the Eastern Mobile Earth not totally on board with it, and the Axis G3 model really not on board with it either. They're calling for a big, broad, low-pressure system with the bulk of the activity moving down towards the Solomon Islands down there. In short, there is a good chance of a tropical cyclone or typhoon developing out of this weather system that's going to develop later this week into the next weekend. Um, but we're not 100% sure if it's going to develop into a big typhoon anymore. So this is a pretty major change once again. The GFS is still holding on with dear life to something developing uh, south of Guam. But again, they've pushed it back in towards late May at this point. It should have developed now uh, if you were to follow the initial forecast of this tropical cyclone, typhoon I should be calling it. See, so this is pretty interesting indeed. I'm not sure why it is uh, like this. It's just a kind of an interesting factor on the forecast. Normally the GFS is not one to be changing its mind up every single model run and flipping and flopping around. But in this case it is and it doesn't look like this is something that we need to be worrying about at this time. We've been talking about fire danger ratings as well later on into next weekend and into early next next week up in the Northern Territory and Western Australia. And to be fair, they don't look overly concerning anymore. They're looking pretty stock standard with high to very high fire danger ratings around the big metro areas of Darwin and Catherine and extreme fire danger ratings deeper into the Northern Territory where you would be expecting extreme fire danger ratings pretty much year round to exist through there. Um, but yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to be as bad of a situation now in terms of fire danger ratings, but I'm going to keep my eye on this because we don't want a big time fire event to happen across the Northern Territory and Western Australia. It's just an interesting development in our forecast here that we have to just make do with really and see what happens out of it. Um, we'll be giving you the latest as well over the next 10 days, even though this is a very confusing forecast at this time. But yeah, you bet this is the source of the latest weather information nationwide. Thank you so much for watching this video as well. A happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers over Australia and New Zealand as well, wherever you're watching around uh, the Indian Pacific region or up in towards Asia as well. A very happy Mother's Day to those that celebrate it. Uh, make sure you got your mum a nice bunch of flowers or a nice gift or something. Uh, but yeah, that is all for me on this weather update and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.